Folks, welcome back to So Bad It's Good uh, on YouTube. So remember to click, like, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff that YouTube is known for. But we are doing another fashion roundup. We did one for the Golden Globes uh, a couple weeks ago, and I got a lot of feedback because I am primarily known as somebody that is really into fashion. I know my stuff, folks. Uh, yeah, I do primarily shop at Old Navy, and I have multiple multiple pairs of Spanx, and I think that gives me the right to comment on celebrities and what they dress as. Now, remember, right off the bat, I don't know the correct vocabulary on how to describe these outfits, so this should be fun slash a nightmare. Now, the 75th annual Emmy Awards were on Monday night in Hollywood. Now, this is really interesting. I thought it was a really good show. I just thought there was such a crowded field of award shows because we had the Golden Globes, then we had the Critics' Choice Awards, and then we had the Emmys. So like two big award shows, Critics' Choice Awards and the Emmys within two days. That is award show overload. And just so you know, the Emmys usually aren't in January. They're usually in September, but they decided to postpone it because of the Writers and Actors uh, Guild strike. So that's why they moved it to January. Hopefully they will move it back or actually pick another date because it is too crowded. And if the ratings are to give us any clue, I think the audiences agree with that because we have an article saying that the Emmys fall to another all-time low. It averaged 4.3 million viewers on Monday night, and that's down 27% from the previous low in 2022 of 5.92 million. Now, of course, there was a playoff football game going on at the same time and Iowa caucus coverage, which, yeah, we're in... Uh, we're in election year again, so I'll probably do some election fashion coverage at some point. But this was an all-time low for the Emmys, even though I thought the show was great. And I thought the fashion was great, I think. I mean, and people showed up. The stars were out. So we're going to go over some of the looks that caught our eye. Maritza is running the controls here, so she's going to be pulling up the images while I take you down the magical world of fashion. Uh, so let's get started on the 75th annual Emmy Awards. Who do we got? Okay, we got Suki Waterhouse. Now, she is an actress from Daisy Jones and the Six. Also, she is presently with Mr. Batman himself, Robert Pattinson. That's right, Edward Cullen from Twilight. These guys are hooking up big time because Spoiler alert, Suki Waterhouse is pregnant with Robert Pattinson's child. Now, what she is wearing, yeah, you can see it in the image right here. Now, she wore this like red flowing dress. Now, the top part of the dress, it looks like, you know, when you have one of those like uh, chef, apron, chef aprons that says like kiss the chef, but it's all in this beautiful red, but it's great because it's like open in the back and like ties on like right underneath the, the shoulder blades and you can see that she's pregnant. So this outfit looked beautiful, but also it did like some heavy lifting, kind of like Rihanna at the Super Bowl when she revealed she was pregnant. This is like, oh shit, she's pregnant. So like from the front, it's just this beautiful red dress. The red gown is like flowing all the way to the floor. But then you go to the side, you're like, this lady's four months pregnant, five months pregnant, something like that. Also, exciting news, Suki Waterhouse, no joke, was uh, she's going to be playing this year's Coachella Music Festival in April. And I'm like, she's got to be due around April. So will Suki Waterhouse give birth to Robert Pattinson's child on stage at Coachella? That's huge. But she looks great. Her hair, it's very a lot of bangs here, a very sultry look. Uh, also, I want you to pay attention to the background, the Emmys backdrop that they took all the photos in front of. It, if you have dyslexia, this thing is going to mess with you because it has like Fox Emmys. There's too many words. It's too confusing. And it takes away from the power of these looks in a sense because your, your eye keeps catching like words in the background. But she looked amazing and we got to, listen, I look ex I would look exactly like this in this red dress. I have the same belly right now that Suki Waterhouse does and I look nowhere near as beautiful. So Suki Waterhouse, good job. We get it. You're pregnant. That's awesome. Okay, who do we got next? We have Aubrey Plaza. Now, Aubrey did some amazing work this past year. The second season of The White Lotus, she was nominated for Supporting Actress for a Drama Series, which I, I still to this day, I don't understand why White Lotus was in the drama series. 
and the bear was in the comedy series. Those are inner Like, I feel like white Lotus could have been in the comedy and the bear could have been in drama easily. Now, Aubrey Plaza doing something really interesting here in that she is wearing what looks like a giant post-it note on the top part. This is like a yellow dress. Um, but the top, it, there's like a couple different ways to look at this. It looks like a post-it note, but then it also looks like it has a big sewing needle, like just jammed in there to hold it down. Like it looks like the sewing needle is like potentially hooked into her skin. Um, but it looks like this, like a post-it note where you'd be like, oh, I want some milk, some eggs. Don't forget this to get at the grocery store, a loaf of bread. But also what it kind of looks like too, if it kind of looks like. You know, remember like packing your lunch for school and you had those like brown paper bags to pack your, pack your lunch in? It kind of looks like that minus the sewing needle. But man, she's beautiful. The the makeup is on point. Also, another hairdo like Suki Waterhouse where the bangs, a lot of bangs here. But this is the deal. I wonder if Aubrey Plaza was like, hey, do you think this looks too much like I'm wearing a post-it note? Like it looks great regardless. And we are talking about it, which kind of makes it like it doesn't look hideous. It looks great. But I'm telling you that thing look like I want to write on that thing so bad. I want to take notes on that thing. Like it just it's I don't know. But anyways, hats off to Aubrey Plaza. Great work on this. I thought it was a great look regardless if it's a post-it note or not. Then uh, what do we have? OK, Natasha Leone. She was nominated for lead actress for the Peacock series Poker Face, NBC Peacock. And Natasha Leone, like, hey, I'm Natasha Leone. What's going on? Natasha Leone also, uh, she's the face of Old Navy this year. She's doing all the Old Navy commercials. And so that's like a lady after my own heart. Um, but Natasha Leone sometimes leans too much into I'm a New Yorker. How you doing? Hey, yeah, that's what I do. And I kind of like almost suspect she doesn't talk like that in real life. She just hams it up whenever she's in any kind of public forum. Now, this is interesting because the dress looks like it's like, what is this? Like, it's kind of like black and silver and like, but the, the big thing here though, is what looks like two big clamshells holding the boobs down. Uh, it's not the color of clamshells, but it, you know what I'm saying? It's it's like, oh, look at what I found on the beach today, honey. And then you, she just put those on her breasticle areas. And she's got that red hair, always, you know, beautiful red hair. The makeup, a little, little, I mean, not even a little, a big, big smoky eye, big smoky eye. The, I mean, Natasha Leone, this look is like, you, I can just imagine going down like an alleyway and she'd be like, come on, we here. And I'd be like, oh shit, who's that lady with the clamshells? on uh, the breasticle areas, like there's just, there's a little mystery and I'm a little scared sometimes with Natasha Leone, even though I know she's hysterical. It's just it's too much like, hey, how you doing? I don't know. But anyway, she little, this one, this one, I'm kind of up. I don't know. This, I, I, I'm trying to be nice here, but this one I'm on the fence about. I think it's the clamshells. If we got rid of those clamshells, I think it would actually be even a way better look, but I guess the clamshells makes it that much more exciting. In fact, Old Navy, why doesn't Old Navy do shit like this where they put like a big clamshell on my man jeans? Like right there in the private area? Wouldn't that be kind of amazing just to like, you'd be like, oh shit, he's wearing Old Navy. That's like pretty ballsy. Uh, so Natasha Leone, that's, you know what? That's a so bad, it's bad. I don't, I'm going to go out and say, I don't like this outfit. Sorry, Natasha. You're okay. Now, finally, the king and queen of television. When you think television, you think this couple, it is Kravis themselves, uh, Travis Barker and Kourtney Kardashian. Now this is their first red carpet, it wasn't actually a red carpet. It was more like a silver, you know, carpet. But this is their first appearance since the birth of their first son. Uh, I think his name is Rocky. And they are on the red carpet. They're all in black. Uh, Courtney looking amazing for just having given birth a couple of months ago. But they both got the black sunglasses on. Uh, and they're doing what they do best. They literally start tongue kissing on the red carpet. And that's when, you know, TV is back folks. You're like, okay, we're going to be all right. This, these, these guys are doing what they do best, pretty much fingering each other in public. And, uh, what I love is that Kravis is like, it's <laughs> just whatever you put Kravis in, it's always going to go to those head tattoos because you got the prayer hands on the one side, you got the Virgin Mary right on the top of the skull. And I always just think about Kravis is like, there's only so much more space 
on his entire body. And I feel like he's still relatively young where he's going to want to get new tattoos through the course of the rest of his life. Well, like what if he wants to get a new head tat? What's going to go like, do we got to remove the hands? Um, in this photo that Meditza found, you can literally see his tongue missing Courtney's mouth. Like the tongue is going for like under the, see, this is what's great. They could literally wear anything. And all I would be paying attention to is where that tongue's going. So they, they look great. They, she's all, she looks so happy with him. He also, by the way, why they were there, he played drums in Anthony Anderson, the host of the Emmys, the opening number. Uh, they did, uh, he, he did, the, you know, did his whole thing. They did, uh, Phil Collins. I can feel it coming in the air at night. So he, uh, Travis is an, uh, Travis Barker is another one of those guys. He's in like four bands, Blink-182 being the biggest one of them, but he always pops up at every award show playing. He's kind of like Babyface in that sense. Babyface always gets loaned out to a lot of charity events or Kim Kardashian holiday parties. But I feel the same with Travis Barker. Like if there's an award show and there's like a drum moment, Travis Barker is like the first person you ask. So anyways, if anybody, uh, I would have, God, this, now, I will say this, no, all joking aside, I think it's like on my bucket list to see them French kiss in front of me one day. I know that's a weird thing, but wouldn't you feel like, oh my God, this is like pinnacle Hollywood to be able to watch them feel each other up like on a red carpet or something. That's, I mean, that's just a goal that I just said out loud. So maybe I'll put that on my vision board. Uh, okay. Who do, okay. Finally, we got a housewife. Lisa Rinna is back, folks. Lisa Rinna killing it. She's not on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, but she did show up on the Emmy red carpet last night uh, just in a beautiful green gown that matched the evil color of Lisa Rinna. No, guys. No, no, no. This is Princess Poppy of RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh, RuPaul's Drag Race won the Emmy for Best Reality Competition Series last night. Well-deserved there. Princess Poppy, I got to tell you, I do love this. I love the ballsiness of it. I love, because literally, demon makeup. I mean, it's like kind of troll demon makeup. Green skin, big old honking nose, uh, and still, at the same time, I got to say beautiful. Yeah, I mean, no, and I this is no offense to my great grandma Horton. My grandma Horton's 99 years old. A similar look. Uh, you know, grandma is not this green, but there is a certain similarity. My grandma's ears a little bigger, uh, but also you like, look at it. The dress actually kind of is pretty nice. And then the, the decolletage, the, the, the necklace and the earrings, it's kind of like these, there's like green and then white crystals. And it looks like pearls with more attachments on it. And I got to say, these little things kind of do it for me. I love that it, it wasn't just this troll makeup. Uh, they actually went for uh, a real dress and real. Uh, and the purse also. The purse is wild as well. If I'm not mistaken, if you really zoom in on the purse, it looks like there's like little dog heads on it. So that is a whole Princess Poppy. This could be my favorite look of the entire evening. And I think it's getting so much attention that on the 76th, M 76th Emmy Awards, you might see this everywhere. This is going to be the look in 2024. Um, okay, Selena Gomez. Now, Selena Gomez, if you watch the Golden Globes fashion video, she was wearing this dress that I kind of liked, even though they said she was like one of the worst dress. And one of the sides of the dress hit the floor and the other was kind of high up. Uh, on her hip area. Now this is interesting because it's a dress, but if you kind of blur your eyes or if I like, uh, I'm not wearing my glasses, it almost looks like a pantsuit. Now the interesting thing though, it's kind of like these black, like kind of black. I don't know. What are you like? These kind of, I don't know. It fucking looks like, like Snickers bars, like, or kind of like, I don't even want to say that because it's too dirty. But the interesting thing here is it looks like, it looks like fingers holding up her, um, her breast area. Do you see that? Like, it looks like it's really, so it's like really highlighting uh, that, that the, the cleavage here. That's what it's the cleavage. Yeah. The cleavage. So it looks beautiful. And the necklace she's wearing, it looks like this kind of beautiful silver. I don't know. What are those? Like, what are those? Be like boomerangs or like birds, but then it looks like it's like a hard candy right in the middle. I'm sure it's some precious gem that like is $2 million, but it looks like a, 
a cough drop right there in the middle, like a red cough drop. And it matches the color of her lipstick. It's like a dark burnt maroon around her lips, really dark makeup. She's got the swoop of the hair on the, the right side. Now this was her first red carpet appearance with her new boyfriend, Benny Blanco. And if you saw the footage of them taking pictures, Benny Blanco almost got asked to leave because they thought he was just some weird homeless man. And cause he has a very different look. He just looks, he kind of looks like, Bob Dylan back in the sixties with like the big hair. And he kind of had like a, a trench coat. A, a lot of the guys are wearing like either really tight fitted outfits or really loose outfits, like trench coat looking outfits. But uh, I thought Selena Gomez looked beautiful, but it kind of looked also like emo beautiful. I was like, you could tell Selena really feels deeply like this was a mood and a very, like, I'm glad she's happy, but it, it was a mood. It was very, it was very Wednesday Adams in a sense. Um, who else do we have? Okay. This, I gotta say this. I think this is just beautiful. All joking aside, Simona Tabasco. Now she was one of the call girls for, uh, the white Lotus. Remember her and her friend, uh, she was nominated for supporting actress for a drama series. And she was just so good in the white Lotus season two, but this is awesome. It's just a bunch of like, what looks like pastiches of like flowers and birds i don't know if i see a cat in there it's like all like it looks like a lot of foliage but it looks like when i make a vision board and i just like paste pictures on top of pictures but they're all bright and beautiful so a lot of pinks and reds and all of this stuff but like it kind of goes good because she kind of has like alabaster skin and that's way because it's like a, a red lipstick really white teeth dark hair, dark eyebrows. For me, I think this is so striking and so beautiful. And you don't see a lot of pastiche dresses. I mean, like, I, I love this. Like, you don't see a lot of this in fashion. I don't even know if that's true. I just don't think I've seen a lot like this. So it was like a breath of fresh air. I was kind of like, it was like a weird kind of tripped out sound of music. I just felt like the hills are alive. Like, it felt like dancing on some kind of mountaintop in the grass. It just, I don't know. Something makes me so happy about this look. Do you guys agree or am I out of my mind? Was this on like the words? I see this is to me one of the best. Her and Princess Poppy so far. Now, Ali Wong, Ali Wong, hysterical. She was a big winner last night. She won lead actress in a limited or anthology series or movie for Beef. Netflix is Beef. Um, and okay. So obviously a very attractive person, okay? But with my naked fashion eye, it looks like she was late to school and her is doing laundry and she didn't have anything to wear, uh, but a mismatched skirt and then whatever this top, this bodice blouse top thing is. Okay. And I would, now I feel like an idiot because that last one was Simona Tabasco. I said, Oh no, nobody's really doing this, but then this is not pastiche, but it is bright, colorful. If you zoom in on the dresses, it looks like it's like little roses and green foliage kind of mistletoe. Um, she's wearing the trademark Ali Wong glasses, even though I think she wears like a dark frame usually, and this is a light frame and she has like these big earrings that like droop down that kind of look like the, the chains and like a Britney Spears, like the album cover. Um, you know what I'm saying? And the, the top of it, it it's very sp like, like, <laughs> fuck i don't know you guys it's like silver and spangly i don't know she's beautiful it's just like it looks like it's two different outfits it's like pick one let one win like what it was and, and and the the top here there's like this mesh part of it after that like the cleavage here i don't really know how to say the right words but that silver area then it looks like there's like a mesh thing like it like it's like a jumpsuit but it's like mesh on the top part i don't know what's happening here i don't know what that like i want to talk to the costumer of this what the theme is is like what are we going for here is this like some kind of big designer i'm sure it is it's like probably like bradley mishka or something like that but um you know she like she's so glowing anyway, so it doesn't matter. Just not one of my favorites. So I'm sorry, Ali Wong. Sorry to do this uh, to you for, you know, anyways, you're good. You won. You won. OK, now, Charlie Puth. Charlie Puth was there uh, because he played the piano and sang during the In Memoriam segment, which was very beautiful. Um, but he looks like he's a cross between a character from uh, Miami Vice or one of the villains in a Dick Tracy film. Uh, this is what I'm talking about where all of these guys are wearing this loose thing, like the pants, like the pants seem to literally go up to his nipples 
And it, or it seems kind of like, like he's bandaged in at the stomach area in these pants. Yet the actual leg area looks like those old MC Hammer pants of like, can't touch this. Dun, 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 dun. Can't touch this. And then it's got this big, like kind of white tuxedo jacket that goes down to his like calves. And I mean, and then he's got that shirt where it's like three buttons open. That's like the big thing to show, so show some chest. The only thing is, and and pardon me, I don't know Charlie Puth's origin story. Maybe, uh, you know, he has uh, eyebrow issues or like, I don't know, like a bit of like, I don't know what he's got, but he has like this. I, it looks like he's cut like this thing into his eyebrow. And it's always been there every time I see Charlie Puth. I've just never bothered to look up why that's happening, but it's very distracting to me. And it takes me, it takes the attention away from this amazing ensemble. By the way, if Charlie Puth jumped out of a plane, you could literally use this as a parachute, his outfit, like he would be safe. That's how much loose fabric is going on here, but he looks happy to be there. He does look like he's won a contest of some sort. Like it kind of looks like that Ronald Gladden guy from the TV show, jury duty where they prank him. And he just seems like a good guy. Charlie Puth just seems Seems like a good guy. He's like, I can't believe I'm here. I can't like, yeah, my eyebrow, right? I don't know. I cut, I just got nervous and I cut something in there. So Charlie Puth, uh, very long and flowing. Congratulations, Charlie. Um, and then we have, okay, this is Pedro Pascal and he brought his sister Lux Pascal. Now, uh, Pedro was nominated for lead actor drama series for the last of us. Um, Pedro is all in black and we did him at the golden globes because he had, uh, his, uh, his arm brace because he messed up his shoulder and it was like a, I think a more tan arm brace. Now he has a black arm brace. This dude, I'm telling, I told you last week, I said, this guy is single-handedly bringing arm braces back. Like, I think it looks so cool that I would invest in like a Pedro Pascal line of arm braces to make you look this cool, but he's just wearing like a basic black outfit. It's just that this bastard is so good looking. Like, you know what's great? Like those really good looking people that are trying to make themselves not as good looking. So they throw on a pair of dark frames and then they're just like, they're still great looking. Like when they try to kind of mess, like, oh, I kind of want to be interesting. And it's like, dude, no, you're still extremely good looking, dude. But uh, yeah, even his sister's like, look how hot this guy is. I know he's my brother, but like, look how hot he, you know, he just, he radiates. He just, he's one of those guys. And did you see his little bit when he came out to present? And he made fun of Kiernan Culkin and he's just so good with the crowd. And I thought that was also too, like he just seems so comfortable and so likable. So whatever this guy can, whatever this guy is going to wear is going to always be good because internally this guy is probably amazing in real life. So it just shows with whatever he wears. Uh, and his sister's kind of hot too. Uh, Issa Rae. Now Issa Rae actor, of course, insecure on HBO, which uh, uh, ended its run a couple of seasons, a couple of years ago. And then actress, she played the president in Barbie, uh, the number one movie of the year. Now, this looks like, like when I worked at uh, Petco in high school, I had these like big brooms and it looks like the the at the end of the broom, it was like this exact dress. It wasn't as flowing, but it was like this color and it had, it's like this kind of white. It looks like a, like a kind of one of the, what are they, like those Sharpe dogs. It just, it's very, it, and there's something very seventies golden girls about this too. Like, you know, she's too young and beautiful for this dress, even though I'm sure everybody's like, oh, it's so beautiful and stuff. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like she should be wearing this just 30 years from now, even though it totally works because she's got this like insanely radiant smile. Also, now that I'm looking closer, this is my fashion knowledge. The beadwork on this thing, you guys, you look at this close. It's not just like a, a Sharpay dog. It's like you look closer. There's like intense beadwork going on. It looks like a lot of little spangly things attached. Uh, and then she's got these big old hoop earrings that you could probably hula hoop in. Uh, but yeah, it's good. She's going to look, she's one of those people going to look good in anything. I just didn't personally, I would never wear this. That's what I, I would never, you would never catch me dead in this, but she looks, she looks pretty good still. Um, who else do we have? Okay. Alex, uh, Alex Borstein, of course, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which ended its run on Amazon prime last year at its final season. Also, you know, her as, uh, the voice, uh, voices on family guy and American dad at times. Uh, Ooh, this is like, this is like if they did like a fourth movie of 50 shades of gray and 
Mr. Gray. Like, you know, it's like, who trained you in your wicked ways, Mr. Gray? And like, this would be the character, you know, who <laughs> just be like, she looks like somebody that's like, oh, who's that? Who's who's that dirty person trying to be sexy at the bullfight? You know, there's like a bullfighter element to this also, but also like a very naughty. You can see some bits and pieces, but then there's like just things like these kind of like strands of maroon, like it looks like I could swing from. And then there's like these big, like roughly red flowers on the shoulder. There's so much going on here. And like, even the, the, the shoes, they've got this black tie up number where I just like, there's so many elements to this. I'm sure if you turned around, I bet it's like just assless. I bet there is, I bet it's like Prince at the 1991 MTV Music Awards, where it just he turned around and his little butt cheeks were like swaying in the wind. I bet this is completely backless. I ah, there she is, closer, uh, very intense and almost. This is how bad my eyes are getting. I was like, oh my god, did she shave her eyebrows? And it's not that. It's just it looks like the white foundation of her makeup almost makes her eyebrows blend into the whole look. There is a lot. I'm going to dream about this look. Um, there's a lot happening here, but as long as she feels good, right? She looks like she feels confident, sexy. That's great. Uh, and I don't think anybody else was probably wearing that last night. So that's a unique look. That's good. That's good. Um, who else do we have? Jennifer Coolidge, winner of supporting actress drama series for the white Lotus two Emmys in a row. Um, now this is interesting. You know, I said Issa Rae, it kind of looked like this golden girls. This is like, there's like a golden girls element to this black dress as well, but it's like sexy golden girls. It's like, Oh shit. It's like Rue McClanahan, like Rue McClanahan from the golden girls. If you don't remember her, she was like, she was the one you knew she was like kind of dirty, you know, uh, but like, like sexy dirty. And there's a, there's a Jennifer Coolidge is nowhere near the age of the golden girls, but this, there's this element of like seventies tea party here with Jennifer Coolidge. Like there it's like black and flowing there. You see a little cleavage here, but the black, the black goes all up to her shoulder. I don't even know what you say this. The hair is beautiful, but there is something. It's like Mae West. There's a little like Western saloon when you would dress up in those photos, like those black and white photos at carnivals. Like, hey, dress up like you're at a saloon with your family. There's like an element of that. Like she's like the head madam, potentially. Uh, this, I'm so sorry if kids are watching this. Um, or maybe I'm not. Anyways, okay, who else do we have? Ah, uh, now Tyler James Williams nominated for supporting actor in comedy for Abbott Elementary on ABC, which their new season, I think, begins like any day now. Now he is going the Timothy Chalamet route. This guy is in all leather. It is. He's got this leather thing and it's almost like kind of like a karate, whatever you call those smocks that karate people wear. The karate kid kind of like crosses over like a karate dojo outfits but it's like black leather and then he's got these like really cool like silver necklace and he's got like kind of like chin stubble a little mustache he looks really cool like if i were to do an eddie murphy biopic from the delirious days that santa special i would i would maybe cast tyler james williams in this but lately i feel like timothy chalamet is all over this leather outfit look and i don't like timothy chalamet in it but for some reason I think Tyler James pulls it off. Am I wrong here? I think he's on point. And it's a little kind of, it's a little, it's a little risque for him, right? Because we've grown up with Tyler James Williams a little bit. Remember when he played young Chris Rock on Everybody uh, Hates Chris? And then now he's, you know, one of the leads on Abbott Elementary. So this is kind of like, yo, I've grown up and I've had sex with people. Like, this is what that look tells me. This is like, hey, I ain't Chris, I ain't little Chris Rock anymore. That's what this outfit tells me. So congratulations to Mr. Williams. Um, and then uh, Giancarlo Esposito, he's one of the main actors from Better Call Saul and before that Breaking Bad and his resume is just littered with amazing performances. Um, but Better Call Saul, actually, they uh, this is wild. Better Call Saul, I got into over the last couple of years during the pandemic and it just became one of my favorite shows. I finally finished it last, um, last year and I was so sad about it, but it had 53 Emmy nominations and zero wins for Better Call Saul. But look at him. He's just kind of in this. There's like a there's a little bit of like a brown maroon uh, tuxedo thing happening. Black tie. And he has these kind of black uh, black wears Waldo sunglasses. He had a little chapeau, a little hat with it that he took off. He's kind of given a little poser 
like a little performance pose. And I like it. He just seems very happy, very music man right here. But I think he looks sharp. I think I like this look. I really do like this look on him, especially. Uh, and I just hate that Better Call Saul. Any chance for me to talk about Better Call Saul, I love. Yeah, look, here he is with the hat. Look how sharp this guy looks. And you got the ring. You got the bracelet. You got another pinky ring on the other hand. And then you got a nice watch. Jewelry is in. I want to get more into jewelry in 2024. Men's jewelry. I used to, I, I swear to God, I tried to get into a wallet chain like 15 years ago when like Ed Hardy was cool, but I have too big a legs. So the wallet chain actually um, put more of a spotlight on my big old honking legs. And that was, uh, it was just, it never worked. Like I always wanted to be that guy that could do a wallet chain. Cause there was like a, there was a time that was in again in Los Angeles. And it just made me so sad that I've just, I'll never be able to got that guy to pull off a wallet chain. But now that I'm thinking about it, can anybody really pull off a wallet chain? Maybe Denise Richards' husband can, Aaron. I could see him doing a wallet chain. Anyways, uh, I'm going off on a tangent. Now, this is just a fun one. You got Daniel, Harry Potter, Radcliffe, and Al Yankovic. Uh, they're posing together because Daniel Radcliffe played Weird Al in the movie Weird, the Al Yankovic story, which was a really funny, funny movie. Weird Al Yankovic, you know, Weird Al Yankovic has had a lot of looks. I grew up in the day of Weird Al Yankovic having the little fro and the, just the mustache. And he really was, when you were growing up, he was like weird Al. Like that's a weird guy that wears a lot of Hawaii shirts, but I loved all his parody songs. And then somewhere around 2002, he got the long weird, like he grew out his hair and it was long and it was like, Hey, this ain't your parents weird Al. This is sexy weird Al, but Daniel Radcliffe, you know, they're just both wearing your basic tuxedos, even though Daniel Radcliffe's is kind of that, mar like the, the brown maroon kind of color. And, Al's in the classic black and white, but li listen, just two, two weird, funny guys, just being there at the Emmys together. They both look happy. And that's what it's all about. Folks being happy, uh, at award shows where they celebrate, uh, rich celebrities. That's what it's all about. I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, now Catherine Heigl, Catherine Heigl was there for a Grey's Anatomy reunion. The Emmys did this cool thing where they celebrated 75 years of TV history. And so they put like old cast together and old sets. You had the Cheers set, the All in the Family set. You had the, uh, Dr. Melfi's, uh, room from the Sopranos. They had that set and they had these reunions and Grey's Anatomy had one. And Catherine Heigl, who left Grey's Anatomy at the height, uh, I mean, it's been popular for a long time, but when it was like, like such a big show, she left to have a movie career and kind of pissed off Shonda Rhimes and a lot of the cast. Well, it was really nice to see her with Alan Pompeo and a couple of the other cast, but you know, Catherine Heigl is just gorgeous. She's wearing a really, what is it, like red satin? And she's got this brooch around the, uh, the belt area and then the red uh, dress. <laughs> I don't know what you fucking call this, but it's like, it just, it, it, there's like, it feels like there's like eight feet on the ground, but it works. There's no straps on here, it, but it covers the cleavage. She's wearing this silver necklace and she's got the, the bright red lipstick to match the bright red dress the hair looks like kind of a 1950s pinup movie star and for me this totally works and i'm telling you this is why award shows are important for people's careers because i think sometimes katherine heigl gets forgotten about and i think things like this it's kind of important to be like oh shit katherine heigl looks amazing oh what's she up to lately i think this is like good for her career and i think there's a chance that she could potentially because Grey's anatomy is now in its 21st season I bet she makes her way back to Grey's Anatomy at some point. Okay, um, let's see. Jessica Chastain. We got movie stars at the Emmys, folks. Now, Jessica Chastain, she was actually nominated for George and Tammy uh, Wynette with Michael Shannon. It was a, a TV movie on Showtime. And listen, she is in Lime Green. It looks... Um, what does this look like? What, what's that stuff that the kids do? They make slime. Like my, my niece would make slime. This would be the color of like her favorite slime, but it's actually like this bright neon green, but then the bottom, it kind of fringes out and she's got the beautiful red hair. It's straightened. It goes down past her armpit. You get to see the alabaster skin. Cause it's kind of like thin strappies. Uh, you get to see a little cleavage here. I mean, she's a movie star. She's beautiful. I read somewhere today that she's like, oh, she's too skinny. Oh, F off. 
Let her be whatever she wears. She doesn't look. She looks beautiful. She looks beautiful. This is a movie star. Makeup is on point. You know who I saw at the airport a couple weeks ago, you guys? I saw Amy Adams. I was just thinking about red hair. And Amy, I haven't seen Amy Adams in a movie in a while. She was with her family at the Burbank airport. And I was like starstruck. It was like, she didn't look anything like this. I mean, she looked like she was coming off a flight. So nothing like this. It was just the red hair reminded me. But she looks beautiful here. And she was in the front row. I don't know if you saw her. And I just felt like the pressure of being in the front row for the whole ceremony because you got to be really engaged and clap the whole time, even though John Hamm was in the front row as well. And I clocked a couple times where John Hamm wasn't clapping when he should have been. And I was like, John, that's a little ballsy, dude. Like, come on. That's a little clap, clap. So anyway, I think Jessica Chastain looks beautiful. Also, this looks like it's potentially like latex or leather. Like there's like a pleather element to this. It, I mean, it really is very, very shiny. This seems like something that would take forever to strip off my sweaty body if I had put this on. So I'm curious what the putting on and taking off procedure was for this. There's just a lot, a lot of baby powder underneath. How do you protect the skin? Like, it just feels like it would meld with the skin potentially. Um, okay. And uh, then uh, I owe a debris. Everything's coming up. I owe right now. She has won three major awards in the last couple of weeks, the golden globe, the critics choice. And now she won supporting actress comedy series for the bear. Now this is a cool dress. Like this is, this looks like the exact uh, material that Michael Keaton's cape from Batman Returns was made out of. It like flows the exact same way on that skirt area. It looks like Batman's cape. And that's what's really drawing me to it because I love Batman. And but it's like this. It looks like just this black leather dress, but it looks awesome, you guys. And then the necklace, just like a very simple necklace, hairs back, couple earrings. You got some strappy shoes. This outfit is so simple, yet so stunning and cool. It has everything that you would want. Makes her look beautiful, fits her form, and it's just, it's like a TLC album. It's crazy, sexy, cool. This is crazy, sexy, cool. Congratulations, Io. And also, I was just like, what a cool smile she has. Like, what an amazing smile. Like, when she smiles, you laugh, but it's also just so, like, inviting. Is that weird? You guys feel that too, right? That's like, that's a really cool thing to have. What a gift. Uh, but I, this is one of my favorites. Now, Donald Glover, this Donald Glover can't decide if he's a comedic actor from community or he's childish Gambino. And he's like the coolest dude in the world. This guy is wearing a two piece, uh, like a suit, but at the bottom and the hips, it seems like there's little, what are those little flowers or are those mushroom caps? But it's like, kind of, it looks like it's like velvet almost. And the thing is, he's not wearing a button up shirt. He's wearing what looks like potentially like like a like a low cut t-shirt like right above the nips and then a necklace and he's just cool it's hard though because i grew up watching donald glover on community where he was like silly and funny and you know donald glover used to write on 30 rock before that he was big into improv and all that and then childish gambino took off and the the reinvention of donald glover is always so interesting to me because he is kind of I don't want to say like, but there's like a Marvin Gaye element to him now. There's like a, it's a like kind of like this sexy, cool thing. But at the same time, this guy is wickedly funny. And I just always wonder if he gets confused about which avenue he's going down in terms of his creative output. Uh, but yeah, this is really cool. And it, it's good to see like not your normal tuxedo. Then Bill Hader. Now, Bill Hader, I had Maritza put this up after she had done all this work. I said, hey, you got to get another picture of Bill Hader because we talked about him on the Golden Globes and he had just kind of this ill-fitting tuxedo, but I just loved it so much still because it's like, it's Bill Hader. So who the F, like he just, I'm just glad he's there. But Bill Hader now, he stepped it up. He's like, I'm throwing that tuxedo away and I'm going to get, I'm going to get like an actual like styled outfit. So it's this gray thing. And it's kind of like that karate look again, like the dojo outfit where it's like, I don't know what do you call that when you're like, uh, anyways, the, the big point of this whole thing, it's ill fitting again. It's ill. It looks like, it looks like his head doesn't even attach to his, but it looks like there's a body and the body's trying to like scrunch in to actually fit the head on top of the body. It's weird. At the same time, I don't care. I think he looks amazing because he's Bill Hader. This guy had three nominations, three losses last night, nominated for lead actor for Barry, writing in a comedy series for Barry, and even, even nominated for directing in a comedy series for Barry. Uh, but it's I just like that he tried here. He also went with his uh, his girlfriend, Ali Wong. So Ali Wong, I just talked about, wearing two different outfits. That must have been a clusterfuck for this couple to try to get ready of just like, who? <laughs> Here's another picture of him. Just look, look at that just sly, come hither smile. I just love this guy so much. 
And here's another guy, Ali Wong is like, I'm going to wear my unique glasses. And he's like, I'm going to wear my unique glasses to the Emmys. But I like that he tried. And I don't care. Like, I just still think incredibly good looking man, this guy. I just, he's so talented, so talented. So Bill Hader, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and that's it, folks. Wow. Have you learned a little something more about fashion than you knew before this? I'm sure you did, because I have so many decades of just wearing Old Navy clothes and accentuating my look and the fits and, you know, all the different things that I wear. I've worn so many different basketball shorts over the years. So I know what I'm talking about. And I think, by the way, that's what that would be. Oh, I do want to share this story really quick, even though I know this has gone super long. That's like everything I do. Uh, I always had a dream to go to the Oscars one day. And when I first moved to California 20 year, 20 plus years ago, um, my grandma, it was like, it was award season when we, like we moved in January and the Golden Globes, the first day we got here, the Golden Globes were taking place. And we went to the Beverly Hilton and saw that. And the Oscars were coming up in a couple months. And my grandma, she uh, used to live in Columbus, Ohio before she passed away. And she worked at a, a store called Schottenstein's, which is like this Jewish department store that uh, you get great deals at. And one day I got a box at my apartment and it was a bunch of, it, it was a bunch of like suit jackets, but there was a tuxedo. There's, it was like a, an ill-fitting Bill Hader tuxedo. And she said, I wanted you to have this for award season. And it was something that I always remember. And I still have that tuxedo just in case I ever get invited to an award ceremony one day, even though I really don't think I could fit into that anymore. But you know what? It would be for my grandma. It'd be a good story, but I love it. And that's what I, I, I that's why you got to pay attention to these looks uh, from my friends that love fashion. They tell me that these things tell a story and I'm learning that a little bit more each video I make of this. So have a great rest of your day or night or whenever you're watching this. Please like, rate, review, subscribe, listen to the So Bad It's Good podcast as well. Thank you to Maritza Lopez who put all of this together and produced this whole segment. And uh, we'll see you at the next award show, which I think is probably the Grammys in a couple weeks. So let's see what we're going to see there. Bye, guys.